for the character of Salazar. I just had this image of a wounded bull. When they are on the arena, he's full of rage and kind of uh, the need of vengeance. But also he's wounded. And the way he walks and the way he moves the head and looks at the opponent, that's something that I want to bring into the character. What are you? The whole journey of Salazar and the crew is about revenge. It's about going back to the person who cursed him for all his death rather than life. And he has this fixation of going towards that man and really close the chapter of revenge. As you take your time, you develop the characters, and now we have a bunch of new characters. And Salazar is one of the great villains of all time. Uh, Javier Bardem, there's, there's not a better actor. This pirate wishes to be cordial. So let me show you what my cordiality is. Hombre, every time I tap my sword, one of your men will die. So I suggest you speak quickly. I was a witness when, I, when they were shooting in Pirates 4. Since Penelope was shooting the movie and I had the chance to be there on set, and I loved the way everything unfolded in the sense that it was fun to watch. And then when Jerry Bruckheimer called me to join Pirates 5, uh, I was very excited about the idea. When Jerry told me that Javier's in, man, I was ecstatic because I've worked with Javier before, and, and Javier definitely gives you something to, you know, to work with, to chew on, to think about it. so you basically get into the ring together and you're throwing things at each other to sort of uh, play, you know, to play. Do you remember me, Jack? Well, your voice has changed, but your breath is still the same. Other than that, I believe you have a gaping hole in your skull. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one more. Well, Javier is terrifying, his makeup, his hair, Everything that Joachim and Esmond have created with this character is very exciting and very interesting, great to look at, and also very frightening and creepy. He's not really a ghost in the traditional sense of the word, but I think that he's cursed to walk in some kind of a middle ground. And it was important for us to give that character depth. Follow him in. I just think he's uh, extraordinary and a very chameleon kind of actor. Being on set with him was fantastic because he created a very intricate physicality for his character, who you have to believe is imprisoned under the sea for 25 years. I have heard stories of a mighty Spanish captain, El Matador del Mar, a man who scourged the sea, hunted and killed thousands of men. No, 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 men, no, no, no. Pirates, eh? It was great working with Javier Bardem because he brought something new to the table in his way of portraying the two different Salazars that we meet, the alive Salazar and the, and the dead Salazar. And he, he chose to play the uh, living Salazar as a matador and then the dead Salazar as the wounded bull. So that was his way of, of seeing uh, his arc and uh, it, it made for a really, really interesting character. Ready and action! I was very surprised about how open they were to the suggestions. I came to the set with some uh, ideas, uh, like this wounded bull, or the way he would walk, or, or talk, uh, and they, uh, they seemed to accept it very well. That made me feel like safe, like there was room for the creativity into the set. I think he's utterly terrifying. There's something about a villain who knows what they are doing and who is intelligent and conniving and has planned things out. You know, he's not just insane. He's out for vengeance. Um, and in his mind, he has every reason to do these things. The first time they talked to me uh, into the character, they were bringing this idea of the face uh, with a hole in it, <laughs> which I, it was hard for me to imagine. To, and then they, they throw some drawings uh, for me to, to take a look. And, and the concept of the herd came later. 
part of the idea for Salazar and his crew was that on the day that they die inside the Devil's Triangle, the whole ship basically blows up. So their parts of their bodies are missing. So there's like negative space, but they could still, they can still walk around, but they can like miss part of their attire and limbs and some are even missing half their head. So it's quite brutal, but it's also with a little bit of fun that they're walking around, you know, with just uh, half a brain. <laughs> <laughs> We had to create a look whereby they look like they'd been blown up. The ship gets blown up, we imagine they've got blown up. We want to do something physical, so we came up with this image of cracked earth. That was our basis for doing all this work. Well, it, it took me a little while to adjust to the time frame in the sense that it was, I think it was like around three hours, three hours, 30 minutes every day for the makeup which I'm kind of used to because I did this movie called The Sea Inside and it was five hours makeup every day. And uh, yeah, you have to be patient, that's all. This is a prosthetics that we've applied. As you can see, it's curling back and that to get this effect, to get this 3D effect. If you can see, look at the hands. These are all, they're all, this is all prosthetics. Now, of course, we can't do that to every single one because we'd be there forever. So this is the same look, but this is <clears throat> all done with stencils and transfers. All painted black, thinking that explosion, gunpowder, blast. Then, of course, we are going to be doing some CGI. For instance, on Salazar, you can see him with dots on his face so that when we finally see him, all that side of his head will be actually blown off. There won't be anything there at all. They're caught between living and dead. They are dead, but they're still here. And we wanted to give them a ghost-like appearance. So, for example, their hair floats like it's underwater, and so does their wardrobe. And there are also pieces falling off them as they're moving around. The hair, as I said, I, I saw some drawings of it, but I didn't have the idea of how would that look actually on screen. So you have to have a leap of faith, say, so, okay. And I like that idea because it's like a floating spirit, like uh, that also helped me to to bring more uh, thickness into the behavior of the character, knowing that there's something lighter going on. The underwater look for the ghosts, it was about kind of really selling this feeling that these characters were underwater, even though they weren't actually in under underwater uh, in terms of where they were in, in space. So there were a few things that were done, uh, mainly in relation to the hair and to the cloth in terms of the movement and the flowiness of it, and making sure that we were striking the right balance of movement that was floaty, but not, uh, not feeling kind of awkward or, or strange. And I think we struck a, a good balance with it. In visual effects, one of the most important things for us to be able to give the directors was the ability to be able to dial up and dial, dial down the performance of the hair and the cloth and the way that it floated. What we did find very quickly, though, is that when you have an actor like Javier, who's giving such an amazingly strong performance, the last thing you want to do is step on that in any way. Spanish. So I would say that more often than not, we ended up dialing down the extreme, the extremities of the movement of the floating parts of their body, the, the cloth, the wounds, and the hair, um, in order not to take anything away from the, the face of the performance. You will soon pay for what you did to me. <laughs> there's, no, 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 there's no need to bother, really. Karina! I have no time to chat because my map's just run away. I will be waiting for you. The wardrobe gives you a purpose as a character. The first time I saw it, I was amazed by the way Captain Salazar looked like. Like, OK, I like this guy. I like the way he dressed because he's always kind of proclaiming himself like a king. So that's the way he should look like. We went back to the costumes we'd used in P4 for those Spaniards. So we made him a captain in the Spanish army, but we wanted him to stand out. So I met with him with a kind of prototype, described it, and it's got a lot of braid, and it's long, and it's majestic looking, and he loved it, and so we went with that. Penny really wanted to use, um, you know, strong shoulders, clean lines to make um, that 
he's very fastidious, he's very impatient. She wanted to try to bring that into his costume. Um, this one is actually ghosted. So there's two different costumes. There's a clean version and then this one, which is what we call the ghosted version. There's so much detail in this costume and it's kind of hard to see because the one that I am showing you is ghosted. The silver embroidery, the beautiful silver buttons, the epaulets with the spaghetti. It's just a really beautiful costume. Silent Mary was huge. You walk around the ship and you see every detail, tiny detail of the, of the construction of the set is so well taken care of. It is amazing. And it's more than a set. It's something that really puts you in the mood. Uh, what I felt being on it is the sadness, the gray zone, the eternal pain that I always imagined my character and his crew are carrying for so many years because of the, the curse they're in. It's so beautifully done that everything, once we were there, it was an energy of being cursed on the sea. A few years ago, we saw an image of a ship that looked more like a skeleton than a ship, and it just floated across the water. And we built a whole sort of mythology and story around that. So Salazar's ship is supernatural. It's a ghost in the way that Salazar is a ghost. And it was very important for us to create characters out of the ships because there are so many of them, about 11, and you need to tell them apart. But it's also fun, you know, to create these. One thing we added was that it can actually open up and, and stuff like that. And that came from growing up a little bit with the Lego and the Playmobiles and the Transformers and kind of like having toys that you can change somehow. And so when we learned that they were making toys out of this, we were thinking, okay, we need to do something with this ship that we can add a layer to it. So that's how that came about. It needed to open up and almost um, open like a jar that could eat and attack other ships. Um, that required for us a lot of sort of development and detail work. The more we started working on this effect and started to bring it to life, the more we needed to kind of dress it up more with like seaweed and extra dangly sort of rigging and cannons that sort of had to hang around. And our crew characters, uh, ghost characters, needed to cling on to that boat as it was sort of performing and uh, attacking things. We've seen ghosts before in Pirates. However, these guys are pirate hunters. And the way Salathar directs his men is that of a captain. He was very mean, though very proper and passionate about hunting pirates and being part of the Spanish Navy. And I thought that juxtaposition was perfect. There's a lot of dignity in his performance and a lot of honor. Ooh. I think that what was important for us going into this uh, was to create a memorable villain. And that's why we felt so lucky when we got Javier Bardem. I've never done a movie this big, and uh, it's, it's an exercise of imagination. But you have to construct your own image and your own imagination and your own fiction and your own mind in order to try to make it become organic. And that's a, and a challenging exercise for an actor. Now, now, it's time to hunt a pirate.